Welcome to the scheduling information meeting to get you ready to become juniors at FCA. If you're watching this in a class at FCA, the way we're doing this this year is that within a week or so, Mrs. Stevens and I will come into a classroom and we will bring the paperwork that you need to sign up your classes next year. If you have any questions while you're watching this, we ask that you write those down and then we can follow up with those specific questions at that workshop. If you are an online student or you are watching this in the summer, you're a brand new student to FCA, we would have sent that paperwork to you in an email. Again, if you have any questions, we ask that you would contact us. I like this saying, the expert in anything was once a beginner. Even though you are finishing up your second year of high school, there are still things that you don't quite know what to do. But you are, I would just want to remind you, you are surrounded by people who are experienced. Mrs. Stevens and I have worked with students for many, many years, getting them ready to enter into their junior year and then getting them ready for graduation. So please be at peace. and. Look to people to help you out as, as you may not know everything, but there is information out there and there are ways to get things you need. And we are here for you. The best way to plan your schedule for next year is to start with prayer. And a reminder from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which states, "In Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. And so, Father, we just pray right now for these sophomores as they're beginning to think about their schedule for next year. I just thank you for your hand on their life. I thank you not only that you will help them to plan for next year, but that you are also helping them to think about and get ready for their future at the end of high school. Thank you for their lives, and I ask a blessing not only upon them, but upon their parents as they guide and direct them. And we just thank you for this time together. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to share a couple resources. The FCA website, we try to keep up to date so that you can go and find information. And one of those pages is the one that has our scheduling information, our scheduling forms, information about the course description, as well as other scheduling resources. The best way to get to that is just to go to the FCA website and do a Google or do a search for courses and, set and scheduling, and that will bring up this page. Another resource for planning is our CCP page. And again, you can find that information by searching CCP at the FCA website. This is College Credit Plus, where you can take high school and college, a course that you can get credit for both while you are at FCA. There will be a meeting in the future similar to this, where Mrs. Stevens will discuss how you can apply and what you need to do to get ready for funding for CCP next year if you are interested in taking a college credit course. Many of you have taken one this year, and if you want to continue, then you need to reapply and go through the process again. Another great resource for planning is the Career and College Planning page. This is where we have information about Naviance, which is what we use to help you prepare for going to college, as well as looking at careers. There's some advising information there. And then there is also a section called Prep Me, which is 76 hours of ACT preparation. So this is another great place to visit on the FCA website. Requirements for all students to graduate from FCA. You need to complete 24 course requirements. The 24 course credits that you need to graduate break down in this manner. Bible, you need four credits if you're here in attendance every year at FCA. If you transfer in later, then you're only required a Bible for each year that you are in attendance. To graduate with a diploma in the state of Ohio, you also need four credits of English, four credits of math, three credits of science, three credits minimally of social studies, 
a half a credit of health, half a credit of phys ed, a fine arts credit, a computer credit, a half credit for senior project, and then that leaves two and a half credits of electives. We really do recommend that if you are thinking about going to college, you want to have a foreign language for those for some of those credits. The academic honors diploma is different than the regular diploma. It requires a little more emphasis on academics and students who are interested in earning one of those need to fulfill seven of the following eight criteria. Four English credits, four math credits, four science credits, which must include chemistry and another advanced science, four social studies credits, foreign language, three credits in one language or two credits in two different languages, one credit of fine arts, a grade point average of 3.5 on a 4.0 scale, and then a 27 composite on the ACT or a 1280 on the SAT. Because you tend to take the ACT or the SAT later, you may not know what your ACT score is going to be. So we really recommend that if you are working toward an honors diploma, that you get the first seven. And then if you get that ACT score, you can reevaluate whether or not you want to take a fourth science or a fourth social studies. There are other honors diploma that have more of an emphasis on math and science. That's the STEM honors diploma, the arts, or even social science and civic engagement. If you want more information about those, again, that is on the website and you would search graduation requirements. In addition to earning your 24 credits for coursework, there are two more requirements. These are what are called the permanent requirements set up by the state of Ohio for your class. The first one is to demonstrate competency and the second is preparation for college and career. The way you demonstrate your competency is to pass with a competent score, the Algebra 1 end of course exam and the ELA 2, which is English 10 end of course exam. That competent score will go on your transcript. It's a little complicated. It actually is a little lower than getting a three or four or five on the end of course exam. We will let you know if you don't pass and you will also have another opportunity if you need to retake it. But that is why the end of course exams are very important because you need to show competency. The other thing is that in order to show preparation for college and career, you need to earn two Ohio Diploma Seals. The Diploma Seals, you need to earn two of them. You can earn more than two, are based out of areas that show that you're ready to go into a career or that you're ready for college. The Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal is is a career one and a lot of our students who are headed for the Career Center will earn this one. The Honors Diploma is, very, is a seal that you get for earning an Honors Diploma. State Seal of Biliteracy has to do with language skills. Technology Seal and the Industry Recognized Credential Seal, those, those tend to be ones that are earned by Career Center students as well. The Citizenship Seal and the science seal. Both of those are as a result of your scores on the end of course exams. So for citizenship, if you get a three or better, a three, four, or five on the end of course exam for US American government and US history, you can receive the citizenship seal. The science seal is getting a three or better on the biology end of course exam. There is also a college ready seal and that is related to your ACT testing. So for example, if you get an 18 in English, a 22 in math and a 22 in reading, then you get the college ready seal. Another seal is the military enlistment seal for those students who as seniors enlist in the military. And then there are three local 
FCA defined seals. One for student engagement, which is participating in sports and activities. The other is fine and performing arts, which is being part of art or choir or, or band. And the last one is community service seal, which is what we use your Cecil. And it's, it's a very good um, seal to have because colleges and scholarships like to see students who have good, strong community service. Now, those two, those local seals at the bottom, if you, of the two that you need to get, only one of those two can be the locally defined. So you need to get one from the list above the locally defined and then one from the locally defined. Once you have two, you can get more of the others. I don't know that anybody's gonna be able to get all of these, but we have students that will, that will probably have three or four diploma seals. Um, if you want to know more about those uh, diploma seals and then also other graduation requirements, go to the FCA website, search graduation, and there's lots and lots of information for you. The college readiness diploma seal that I've talked about has to do with taking the ACT or the SAT. And the state of Ohio has set up that the high school that you go to can give you one of those tests for free during your junior year. We choose to give the ACT test because most of our students go to colleges where the ACT is the preferred test. That test will be given at FCA during your junior year next year, and it can be used for your score for college admissions as well as earning a diploma seal. About the FCA grading scale, most of our classes at FCA are on the standard scale. We do have some on the honors scale. Those would be our honors classes like physics, anatomy, and physiology, and also our CCP classes. The reason that we have this honors scale is that we do want to encourage students to not be afraid of taking difficult classes the difference between the scales is that on the honor scale, if you have an A minus, the GPA rank for that is a 4.0 similar to an A. Remember that your high school grade on the transcript is for the semester grade for each class. So it's very important that you take care of your grades throughout each semester. The exam classes that you have are also part of your semester average. And remember that we do exams in English, math, science, social studies, and foreign language. The semester exam and the final exam in those exam classes are 20% of your semester grade average for those courses. Now, this year as sophomores for second semester, you will be taking the end of course exam for English 10 and for biology. If you're in Algebra 1 or Geometry, you'll be also taking that one. If you are in the classroom U.S. History, then you will also be taking that end of course exam. We do not have you take a second semester exam this year because you are taking that end of course exam and we want you to focus on getting a good strong score for those exams. Before I talk about the grade forgiveness program, I want to talk about your GPA. Your GPA at the end of your junior year, at the end of next year, for those of you that are going to college, will be the GPA that will be on your transcript that is sent for, you, for your college application. So it's very, very important that you have the strongest GPA possible when you apply to college. Colleges have changed their policy of looking at ACT and GPA. They have started what's called a test optional option, which means that as a student, you can tell them that you just want them to look at your grades, your transcript and not necessarily your ACT test scores. Now, if you're a good test taker, you want them to look at your ACT test scores and your GPA. But if you would like to 
have them look just at your GPA, then that really says that it's very, very important to make sure your GPA is as strong as it can possibly be. So we have always had the grade forgiveness program at FCA where you can retake a course that you have passed with a lower grade and then work on improving that grade and we put the higher grade on your transcript. We've ac actually expanded it this year to include the use of Ignitia classes. Two reasons for that. One is that Ignitia is an NCAA approved program and so those students who want to go to D1 or D2 schools have to have core college prep classes and Ignitia is one of those approved courses. The other reason is that if you do the Ignitia program as a forgiveness program, we give a pretest for each unit. And then basically the program is built around what you don't know. Because obviously we do, it's not just the grade, we want you to learn the information. So the beauty of this is it will evaluate what you know, and then it will have you learn what you don't know or strengthen what you've forgotten and then you can finish out that course. A good example for this would be maybe if you got in Algebra 1 when you were in junior high and you got a B, and you look back and you're like, ah, you know what, I could probably do that better. It might be a good class to consider that you retake through the Ignitia program. If you're interested in doing that, that is a question that we can ask and we can work with you on when we meet with you. Your GPA is also something that we use when we prepare for graduation. We don't rank at FCA, and that mainly is because we are of such a small class. Ranking narrows down your ability to apply to scholarships. And so when we don't rank, that means that the scholarship opportunities are much wider open because now the scholarships are based on your, your GPA and not necessarily your GPA and your rank. The other way that we use uh, GPA is in determining graduation medals. So if your cumulative GPA, which is all four years at the end of your senior year, you have a 4.0, then you will graduate with a summa cum laude medal. If you have a 3.9 to a 3.99, you will graduate with a magna cum laude medal. And then if you have a 3.7 to a 3.89, you will graduate with a cum laude medal. We also use GPA and your ACT scores to, to help us determine who will be the graduation speakers. There's also honor cords that you can um, earn based on how your GPA is, and then also members of honor societies like National Honor Society or Mu Alpha Theta have designated honor cords that they will wear at graduation. GPA for college acceptance. I've pretty much already talked about this when it comes to the test optional. Your GPA is very important on your college applications. Again, your GPA at the end of your junior year is going to be very, very important. So we want to make sure that it is as strong as it can be. One of the ways that you want to look and approach your schedule is to make sure that you are not sacrificing your GPA by trying to take your credits too quickly. It is much better and that's why we encourage you to plan out your four years so that you take the most demanding course load you can where you are going to get the strongest GPA you can. So that means that for some students you may be taking classes all eight academic periods and for some students you may want to take fewer classes so that you can concentrate on getting the best grade that you possibly can. College recommendations, obviously we want you to consider your course load moving forward. Um, your ACT scores and your GPA, I've already said, are very, very important. The thing is, the more difficult classes you take, the more difficult information you learn. The better your GPA, pretty much says that you've learned that information. The stronger the GPA, the stronger the classes you take, the better prepared you are for your ACT. So it's one big circle. We uh, encourage you to balance your course load. Um, life is not all about academics. So if you like to take choir or band or art, please do so, enjoy those things, because um, that will help your high school 
years as well. And then lastly, colleges do want a well-rounded student as opposed to just an academic student. They are looking for the kids who are at, in athletics, who, who understand the importance of community service, who are part of um, being in an in a, um, organization as well as working on your academics. Study hall is something that you need to consider into your schedule. That may be a place where you build some margin in your life, and that really is a personal choice, probably something you need to discuss with your parents. Especially if you're an athlete, you may need time to study at school, especially if you have ball games and practice after school. One of the things I want to remind you is that study hall is not just a great place to keep up on your homework. It's also a great opportunity to use that time to prepare for taking the ACT, looking for colleges, looking for career opportunities, perhaps even touching base with a teacher that you need some help in a class with. It's a great time for you to come to the guidance office if you have that study hall time. It's also a good time that you could build in an Ignitia Forgiveness program if you wanted. So please remember that study hall is not always something where it has to, I have to have homework all the time. There are other things that you can do in study hall. And again, if you do not want to have a study hall, we can try our very best to fill up your schedule to make sure that you um, have a, a full day. Want to remind you that you need to make sure that as you schedule, for your junior year. Your junior year is going to have some tough coursework. Please make sure you don't schedule your junior year in such a way that your senior year you just slack off. You don't want to do that. Colleges want to make sure that you are finishing well. So please avoid that senior slack off temptation. And the other thing is you can start looking for college applications and scholarships now. Again, there's information on the FCA website for scholarships and applications. It's not a bad idea to start looking. Colleges are having more Zoom opportunities for you to look at their colleges, so you don't really have to make a visit by leaving home. Next year is the year that juniors are to start narrowing down their college choices so that when you start your senior year, you know which colleges you're going to apply to. Next year, you'll take the PSAT as a junior. That is going to be the year where the scholarship for the national merit will, scores will come from your testing. So this year you took it as practice, you have that information to prepare for, and then next year is the year that you are eligible to be considered for the scholarships. Next year, again, we will give you the ACT. You can actually start taking the ACT now. It is offered even more than seven times a year, and you can apply and still take that. One of the things I'm going to let you know is that starting last September, the ACT is doing what they call ACT section testing, which means that once you've taken the ACT for the first time, if you want to go back and just concentrate on one area, you can sign up just to take that one area and then they will take that test and they'll re-average your ACT and what they call super scoring. So it's a good new program that ACT has started. Naviance um, continues to be our college and career planning resource. There's lots of information on there, um, in, including at least 76 hours of practice for the ACT. There is also a resume builder. And I really would strongly encourage you to um, start your resume because you don't want to get to your senior year and not remember what you've done. If nothing else, make sure you have a folder where you are putting in your certificates or letters or things that say that of things you've accomplished, especially when it comes to your um, sports or your um, honors organizations or anything that you do. A quick overview of the College Credit Plus process. Your AC, you will need an ACT, SAT, or an Accupation score. If you are going to continue to take college credit courses, you have to apply again every year. If you've already taken the ACT or you have an Accupation score from last year, you don't need to take it again. 
If you don't, uh, Mrs. Stevens will help you take the AccuPlacer here at FCA. College Credit Plus allows you to enroll in college while you're still in high school, and then you can earn credits for both high school and college. I like this chart on CCP statistics for FCA. As you can see, not every one of our students takes college credit coursework. You can kind of see that during starting this 10th grade year, about half the class, 11th grade year, a little bit more than half, and then even the senior year, about three quarters of the class will take college credit plus coursework. So you really need to think about whether or not you want to start your college coursework at FCA during high school. Now, I also want to talk to you, any of you students who are interested in the Career Center before we start scheduling. If you are interested in attending the Career Center, and there are two Career Centers that we work with, we have had students who have attended FCA, attended the Career Center for half days during their junior and senior years and graduated with us. If you are in the public school district of Lancaster, that means that if you were attending public school and you weren't at FCA, you would be in the Lancaster, at Lancaster High School, then your career center is Lancaster Career Center. Any other school district like Pickerington or Burn Union or Grove or any of those areas, Canal Winchester, you are serviced by Fairfield Eastland Career Center. We have worked with both of those programs. It is very important that if you do want to do Career Center for your junior and senior year while you are at FCA, that you apply this spring, you go to the Career Center and you talk to them and you get accepted there, and that you also meet with us in the, in the guidance office because we will need to plan out how best you can accomplish the credits that you need. There are some credits that you do not need to have if you're at the Career Center because you're taking other Career Center credits. So it's important that we sit down with you and plan out the next two years. If you're interested in Career Center, basically how that works is that you are at the Career Center in the morning of your junior year and then you come and take academic classes at FCA in the afternoon. And then in your senior year, you are at FCA in the morning and then you go to the Career Center in the afternoon. So again, if you are a student that is interested in the Career Center, either at Lancaster Career Center or at Fairfield Eastland Career Center, please set up an appointment to talk with us in the guidance office. Um, so let's get into the actual scheduling for next year. Obviously, you will take Bible 11. We'll continue with CECL. Remember that CECL is Students Engaged in Servant Leadership, which is basically FCA's service organization that you are part of that should be on your resume. So um, CECL doing community service outreach to um, home, community, and school is a Bible requirement. It's also something that will go on your senior resume and um, it is also how you can receive the community service seal, diploma seal, that is one of the local seals. Your English for next year is going to be English 11. Math, um, four credits, a reminder that you do need Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. Um, take math every year. Please stay math ready. Don't get math rusty. Don't plan on your senior year not taking any, any math. Now, sometimes it does work that way, but it really is wise to continue. Math options beyond Algebra 2 um, include uh, CP Algebra Review, Pre-Calc, Stats, AP Statistics, Calc 1, Consumer Math, Trig, um, more math courses. Your science requirements are three for a regular diploma and four for an honors diploma. Chemistry is a lecture and a lab course. If you are college prep, remember the minimum is physical science, biology, and chemistry. And just to help you kind of look ahead for your senior year, physics is a great course for the ACT. And anatomy and physiology is also another course that can either be taken as a junior or senior. So sometimes we have students who will take anatomy and then take chemistry as a senior. 
sometimes we'll have students who will take chemistry and anatomy and physiology. So if you're interested, you really like science, go ahead and sign up on that and then we will do the best we can to schedule you. Your social studies minimum requirement is three credits. For an honors diploma, you need four. Junior year, you will take government first semester. And then second semester, you'll take the economics and financial literacy. At the end of the first semester of government in January, you will take the government end of course exam. And as a reminder, if you get a three or better on that, and you also have a three or better on the US history exam that you're gonna take at the end of this year, if you're in the US history classroom, and you get a three or better, then you will get the Ohio Citizenship Seal. The one thing I forgot to share when I was talking about that Ohio Citizenship Seal is that if you took the CCP US History class this past year and you scored, your final grade was an A or B in the class, you automatically receive a five toward the end of course exam. If you got a C in the course, then you have a four. So you've already, if you took, you don't have to take the end of course exam at the end of this year because you took the CCP class for that. Here's a list of the college credit plus courses. Some of you have taken some of these already and some will begin to look forward. Just a reminder, when we're talking about social studies on this list, Survey of History II is a, is a social studies course, as well as uh, General Psychology, Intro to Social, Western Civ, One and Two, and Holocaust. Those are all social studies credit courses, as well as other good credit courses that you might consider taking for CCP. Um, again, so students interested in CCP, gotta see the information video and apply for acceptance and funding for courses before April 1st. Foreign language, um, it is not required to graduate. Most colleges, however, do recommend at least two credits in one foreign language uh, with three or four encouraged or two years in two languages. We do have Spanish one through five here in the classroom. Um, that is really the best way to take Spanish. Um, However, some students do like the online option. So we do have Spanish in the Ignitia Lab, uh, Spanish 1, 2, and 3. Those are NCAA approved uh, college courses, or yeah, college prep courses. So if you want to be, uh, if you want to play D1 or D2 sports, um, they are approved for that. And uh, French also is another option that we have, but we only have French 1 and French 2. So if you take that, then you would have to do the 2 and 2 if you want the honors diploma. Fine arts, you need one credit to graduate. We will be bringing in an offering sheet, but the fine arts basically are your choir, your art, your visual media, your music courses, your band courses. Those courses, we really encourage you to take as repeat credit, especially if you're good in choir and you enjoy it. That's a great way to build your GPA by taking a course that you enjoy. So you do need to sign up for at least one. And if you take more than one, then you can qualify for the Fine Arts Diploma Seal. Computer, um, a lot of you probably have already taken your computer one. If you haven't, really strongly uh, recommend you take it in the classroom. If you have good skills, I mean, I'm talking awesome computer skills, you can keyboard, you can type, you don't have any problem with anything. You can do the computer competency assessment. You need to do that before the end of your uh, junior year though. Please get that done so that we're not, have, we're not uh, having to schedule you into computer as a senior and we're not sure if you're going to get it done. So if you want to do the computer competency assessment, it is on the scheduling FCA page. You can see what is required. You can even do that in the summer and turn that in. And then there are also Ignitia online lab courses that can be taken um, for students who want some um, computer information. 
phys ed, a half a credit. Some of you already earned that through eighth grade. Some of you may be on strength training. I encourage you, if you're an athlete, to do strength training. Remember, that can be scheduled for two, three, or five days a week. And then there's also the physical education waiver. The physical education waiver has been set up by the state of Ohio, and it allows that half a credit of phys ed to be waived if you have participated in two seasons of any FCA sport, cheerleading, archery, and or marching band. So if you have done two seasons of a sport or you've done one season of a sport and another season of marching band, you can apply for the waiver and waive that requirement that you need for the half credit of phys ed. There is an FCA waiver form that you have to fill out. So that's the application. You fill it out, you get the signatures, then you turn it into the guidance office, and then we place that waiver on your student transcript. There is no credit or grade placed on the transcript, just the fact that it is a waiver. And then you will need to get an additional half credit amount in another subject area. You still have to graduate from FCA with 24 credits. You can't just waive that half credit and graduate with 23.5. So you can pick it up in another area. Another way to get your physical education requirement is to take the Ignition Physical Education course. You can take that for the full half credit amount, or if you don't need a, the full amount, we can adjust what is, what is needed. The Ignition Physical Education can be taken during the school year or it can be taken during the summer. Um, the course is actually $160 if you take the entire phys ed course, but if you only need uh, like 0.2 or a half of it, we just reduce it. So if you need 0.25 credit to get your phys ed taken care of, it's only $80. And of course you can see here that uh, you will need to register, pay for, and then the course will start at the end of our school year into the summer. Health is the same thing. You have to have it. You can either schedule it next year or your senior year. You can do it online during the school year, or you can also do it in the summer. And again, there is a fee for that. Mrs. Brake is the one who does it, and you would register in May. Um, there is information on the scheduling uh, page for how to uh, sign up for that as well. Ignitia Lab is where we offer 65 plus courses that can be offered during the school year and can be started at any time. You're scheduled into a teacher supervised lab period or a study hall where you can access a Chromebook or computer and work on it. We'd recommend that you not use the Ignitia, your phone for the Ignitia because sometimes that doesn't work as well. The program is available 24 seven and it just gives us more options for students. To, to have classwork. The last requirement is senior project. Senior project is where you can earn a minimum of half a credit up to a full credit. The amount of credit you earn is based on how many hours you spend in your capstone project. The capstone project is a project that you, you create. You do a project, then you do a paper, in conjunction with your English 12 class. And then in May, you do a presentation of your project and your research. The other thing that is done in senior project class is the building of your senior resume, as well as applying for colleges and doing scholarships. Your senior resume starts with information from your freshman year. These are activities that you've done, the sports you've been part of. It's not a bad idea. For you to get into Naviance now, you can even do this in the summer and update your resume so that when you get to be a senior, you're not doing and having to think all the way back to your freshman year. Some resume builders that you need to include in Naviance would be your years of participation in, in athletic teams. That can also include club teams. You want to put your varsity awards as well as any league awards you may have earned. Student council, if you're a class officer, quiz team, and then any honor societies that you may be inducted into. 
there is a page on the FCA website for those honor societies. That's a great place to look and see what do you need to do in order to become a member of the National Honor Societies. All of that information is on there. Other great resume builders is being a peer tutor, which would be being a math tutor after school, uh, being a member of marching band and choir or night, night singers, mentor opportunities, being a student helper in the building, helping teachers, helping in the offices, helping as a PE assistant, as well as the Cecil and Mission Outward Reach work that you do. Community service is very big as far as College is wanting to see students who participate in that, and there are many, many scholarships that are out there as a result of you doing hours in community service. So including that in your resume is very, very wise. As well as including babysitting or house sitting or even pet sitting. If you have someone who has left their child or their house in your care, then that shows that you must be a responsible student and that's a good thing to have on there. If you work as well, it is wise to put that information on your resume. We are down to the final slide and the final slide is what do I do now? Well, we will need you to complete a pre-scheduling form. Mrs. Stevens and I will be coming into a class and doing a workshop with you where we will have the form and your transcript and other information that you can use to develop your schedule choices for next year. You'll take that home and get your parents' signature and input on that, and then you'll return that to the guidance office. We will take that pre-scheduling form and we will build the master schedule based on student interest and availability of staff, and then we will build your schedule using your pre-scheduling form. If there is a need to make an adjustment to your schedule, we will do that in August prior to the start of school and you do have up to two weeks after school has started to make changes to your schedule. We do recommend that you try and make your, your schedule changes as quickly as you can because it is very difficult to catch up after two weeks if you add a class that late. The other thing is to review and adjust your four-year schedule plan. How do you, what classes are you going to take for the next four years? Although for you it's going to only be the next two years. So thank you so much on behalf of Mrs. Stevens and myself for listening to this, and we look forward to helping you schedule for your junior year. Thank you.